You know, just before we get started today, I have a little comment to make. I, for one, do not understand the purpose of a leather seat in a car. Now, the way it seems to me is that we pay extra to get leather seats, which stink because they're always way too hot or way too cold. So then we pay even more extra to get leather seats that are heated or ventilated so they won't be, you know, way too hot or way too cold to sit in all the time. Uh, I don't, I don't, I don't get that. Why don't we just use like cloth seats? Like they, they don't need temperature control. I just, maybe that's just me. I don't know. Greetings everyone, it's your boy Tiberius, and today I have another installment in my T-Bear Teaches series where I take little things that uh, I think everyone should know or should pick up in their lives, but not everyone necessarily does, and I try to identify some of those and share them with you. So today I want to talk about something that I think that some of you hope that some of you will find useful, and that is how to tie a fish hook onto a piece of fishing line. So, since a real fish hook and a real piece of fishing line would be way too small for you to see if I were to try to tie it for you on camera, I'm going to zoom it in and use a little analog. So I have this little uh, Swiffer mop right here. You can see it has a nice little hole there. It should work well for the, for the fish hook. And my fishing line will be this piece of nice, lovely, cheap plastic rope that I got at the dollar store. So here it is. First, I'm going to show you how to do it, and then I'm going to break down the steps a little bit more detail. So to start, we want to take our fishing line, and we want to put it through the eyelet on the back of the hook that you can see here. Okay, And you want to make sure that you pull plenty of, of slack line through there. Don't worry, you can cut this later if it's, if it's too long, but you're going to need to do quite a bit with this. So you want to make sure you've got plenty of, uh, of line here to work with. Now after you come through, you're going to take this tail and you're going to wrap it around the main line. Now this is the line that's heading back to the rod, okay? And you're going to wrap around about five times. It's not an exact science, but about five times will do it. So I think that's one, two, three. This is four. And this is five. Now you want to take this tail and if you'll notice up here where the eyelid is, between the eyelet and your first twist, you form sort of this little hole right here. See, here's the eyelet, here's the first twist, you've got this little hole. You want to take your tail and you want to go back through this loop that you made. And as you're doing that, you're going to notice that the new tail, where the tail comes down and goes through, you formed another hole. So you have your twists right here and you have your tail where it comes down and feeds through this loop. You're going to come around and you're going to go back through this hole again. And that's basically the end of your knot. All you need to do at this point is kind of tighten everything up. So if you'll put your hand on the line going to the rod and kind of pull, you, uh, you may have to help these rings sort of slide down. They are better on real fishing line, but on this uh, example it's it's all kind of stiff let that slide down nice and tight and then let the tail pull through nice and tight and you'll get something that actually kind of looks a little bit like a hangman's noose right here with multiple sort of uh, um, links that wrap around each other and once you pull that down kind of tight you'll notice once it settles that this will form a really good really sturdy strong fishing knot and this knot can be used for tying on a hook or um, it can be used to tie directly into the lure or it can be used to tie a swivel basically any tie that you need to make any knot that you need to make while you're fishing you can basically use this knot all right let's do that again and let's take it step by step here's your hook you've got your eyelid on the end right here you're going to take your line Remember again, this this line, it's it's open on this side. The other end will go back to the to the rod, and you put the open end through the eyelet on the hook. All right. Now I'm going to exaggerate this a little bit. You can see as you come around and you start to make your twists right here, 
that you're going to form this loop. You want to make sure that you you keep that loop where you, uh, kind of visible. And make about five wraps. I think that was about five. I was talking instead of counting. Then back here where you have the the loop in the line that you made between the eyelet and your first twist, you want to take your tail and go back through there. All right. When you do this, you're going to form. I'm going to back this off so you can see. When you do this, as you can tell right here, you're forming another loop. So after you go through the loop between the eye and the first twist, you want to turn around and you want to come back through the new loop that you just made. And that's the end of your knot. You're just going to try your best to pull it down nice and tight, making sure that each one of these little um, coils here locks around one another and slide down towards the eyelet. Okay. And that is basically your knot. Now, one little tip that you'll want with this is that when you're doing this step of sliding all of the little uh, coils together, a lot of people say that you should somehow wet this as it's going. It'll help it hold up. Uh, I've tied it both ways. I don't know that it makes a significant amount of difference in the strength of the knot, but it, it never hurts to, uh, as you're pulling this down tight, to kind of dip it into the water as you're making this. Just get it a little moist, and that will help your knot be even stronger. And there you go. Once you're done, if you have a lot of excess left on this tail that you use to tie it, you can just take a knife or, or whatever you have with you as a cutting tool and just snip it off. Don't snip it so close down here that it's ready to retract, but you can snip it with a little bit less tail. And there you go. This knot will be good, durable, and strong. It shouldn't untie on you, and it should be useful in any fishing need that you have. All right, so thanks a lot for watching. I hope you found this helpful. Um, please, uh, if you uh, have any uh, feedback for me, please feel free to comment below. And please like, share, and subscribe if you like the channel and what I'm doing here. And uh, yeah, I'll talk to you guys all soon.